Okay. Okay. Hello, good, good morning, and welcome to the thirteenth episode of We Spire Labs, or where we aspire to inspire your startup journey and also equip you with the right knowledge. In order to achieve that, today we have Mr. Andrew Tan from Crowdplus.asia and also TBV Capital, which is a venture capital capital company, and Crowdplus is a equity crowdfunding platform. Yeah. So without further ado, we'll now invite Mr. Andrew Tan to Hi, Rod. to introduce himself and his company. Okay, uh, just a quick introduction about myself. Okay, uh -huh. my name is Andrew Tan. Mm -hmm. I'm the managing partner of uh, TBV Capital. We previously was known as Think Big Venture. So TBV actually stands for Think Big Venture. So now we wanted to upgrade ourselves to kind of a B status. That's why we actually go re through a rebranding. Okay, Think Big Venture basically is a seed to Series A venture capital investment firm. Seed to Series A. Yep. Our okay. ticket size, we, we, what are we looking for is that we are actually looking for B to C space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, look, uh, taking up uh, those any startup who are actually looking to compete in the space of B to C. Uh, solving online to offline we are actually looking for startup that is going to uh, bridging between commercial business and technology so basically how to extend the services of a commercial business in a more cost efficient way okay. in a more convenience way to the uh, mass market which is the consumer market so our investment ticket size is between two hundred fifty thousand up to a million so could you give example of like conventional business going into the tech world today okay basically we are looking we are actually looking to uh, change uh, digital beauty platform we invested in a company called we Star asia mm -hmm. basically what we want to do is that we want to empower those stylists or entrepreneur or salon owner salon to actually uh, okay. to, to adopt technology uh -huh. on their booking on their business management system on their digital marketing on uh -huh. their customer acquisition on their content content mm -hmm. release and then you know try to adopt technology in scaling their business. We also invested in a company called Beam. Beam basically is connecting startup to the VC, to the funding, mm -hmm. okay? Startup, business entrepreneur are looking for funding, mentor, educations, you know, marketing channel, social media management. Actually, mm -hmm. they can actually go into Beam, actually uh, run from there. We also invested in company like uh, Refresh, based in Singapore. Refresh. Refresh. Uh -huh. So Refresh basically is, is solving problem for pre-love clothing basically pre a, pre clothing, uh, yep, uh. a lot of pre-love clothing basically will sell in offline mm -hmm. what we try to do we create a platform and a community where women uh -huh. can actually sell their pre-love clothing through to other yeah users, they kind of yeah. like wear their clothes only once yep yep <laughs> we just want to give to sec uh, pre-love clothes a second life uh, okay, okay we also invest in companies like uh, uh used to be called gotix now uh, we rebrand it called haps we are the official partner for Spotify Singapore. Wow. What we are creating is the uh, we want to help selling experiences. Selling experiences. So we are basically uh, online ticketing, selling uh -huh. experiences to uh -huh. the mass market, uh -huh. where actually they can buy it at a lower price. That's one the surge pricing thing, right? It's actually not a surge pricing thing. Okay, yeah. basically how it works is like this: yeah. an event organizer mm -hmm. will create a concert, maybe. Right. Okay, after they create a concert, the first month of the launching, uh -huh. they will give out a certain discount, early bird right. discount. Right. 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 But after the second or third month, mm -hmm. okay, what they will do, they sell at the full premium price. Mm -hmm. And then most of the concert during the last two weeks yes. or uh, three weeks, uh -huh. most event organizer. We might have sold seventy percent or eighty percent. Unsold tickets come back. Yeah, unsold yeah. tickets come back, and those are the empty seat. They're worth uh -huh. some money. Uh -huh. So what we do is that we're going to take up the empty seat, uh -huh. and then we will list it in our platform, and then we will tell the user, okay, now I have two hundred dollars seat for Ed Sharon, let's say. Right. Okay, how much are we willing to pay? Uh -huh. Is it it's a like a bidding on that? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, you will name your price, okay. and then we will use a group buying power. Uh -huh. Then we will tell the organizer, okay, it's now nice. this two hundred dollars seat. Uh -huh. There's 128 customers who are willing to pay at 150. Will right. you want to sell? Right. So if you sell, if the uh, if the deal tips, we will just sell. I just yeah. heard about one from Indonesia. Yep. It's a hotel booking platform. Yep. Five star hotels at three star prices yep. the night before. Okay. So the ones that not booked or cancelled, it goes online the night before, but they don't sell you the hotel name. I see. I see. So it's kind of mystery, mystery yes, booking concept. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. So yep. like. About uh, Crowdplus. Crowdplus .sia? Okay, Crowdplus. Okay, basically Crowdplus. Uh -huh. We are one of the six license operator for equity crowdfunding in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Crowdplus have a unique business model. Uh -huh. We basically raise fund. We help issuer. Issuer is a company that come to us who are looking for funding. Issuer. Then we actually 
raise fund from them with retail investors. What is the strength of Cloud Plus is that Cloud Plus, we have about 2,200 over retail investors who are ready to invest. Okay. We are we run Crowd Plus based on our VC, uh, venture back methodology whereby what we wanted to create is that we want to extend this exclusive investment opportunity used to be only available for the rich and high net worth ah, to, the, pub to right. the public. Yeah. 3 million net worth or something like that. Yeah, that is sophisticated investor. Yes. But what we want to do is uh -huh. see a lot of Indian investors, mm -hmm. a lot of maybe some investors, they mm -hmm. want to participate in investing. Yes. However, uh -huh. the real challenge is that you ask them, uh, how do I gauge which company is bankable? Yeah, like how, how do I do the due diligence? Uh -huh. How do I ensure the money when I invest into this company is going to put in the good use? What sure. about those value creation and how do I exit? How do I ensure this is a legal, pro right. appropriate structuring? Uh -huh. So we, because in Crowd Plus, we are, most of my colleagues and my partners are from venture background. Okay. So we've been doing venture investing over the past 15 years. So what we want to That's do is a long it, time, man. yeah. So we want to extend this opportunity to get the public to participate with the venture capital together in a bankable deal. Okay, okay. So that is what we Crop Plus are doing. We are actually uh, in Crop Plus. We are focusing a lot on SME. Mm -hmm. Okay, company. Uh, our our criteria is actually basic, but we wanted to look for at least a year a company, year's operation. a real operation, revenue revenue generating. Yeah. Maybe you might still have some burn rate, but at least you have proven that your execution ability, mm -hmm. your customer acquisition is there, okay. revenue generating ability uh -huh. is there. So at least something that we can work together. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, one note to the viewers: yep. If y'all got any questions for Mr. Andrew, yep. just drop it on our Facebook Facebook live feed. We'll try to answer them during our event today. Yep. All right. So, uh, Andrew, like, um, could you tell like when you started Crowd, Crowd Plus and Think Bing, which came first, and how did they like help each other? Okay. Basically, uh, me and my partners, mm. several of my partner, co-founded Think Big Venture in mm. two zero and five. Okay. Okay. How do we come along to start this venture capital? Is that uh -huh. we realize that there is a gap. A lot of venture uh, VC firm in the market mm -hmm. is actually looking for late stage. Late stage. Okay. okay, we see that there is a gap whereby the early stage where mm. all these startups need a lot of help. Uh -huh. So we wanted to come in to help them so that the late stage investor have an opportunity to invest in the deal. Right. right. Okay, we started in 2015. Our fund size is small, about mm -hmm. 10 million USD. Uh -huh. Okay, so we we've been we've been focusing on helping helping a lot of new startup, a lot of company that is actually uh, going through a growing stage. Uh, okay, but lack of funding. Yeah, right. We don't actually. We don't really put in funding, which is the key. <laughs> our, our focus is actually to drive smart capital. Okay. Yeah, funding smart with the, capital with the right mentorship, with uh, the right partnership. Right. Uh. We when we started Think Big, what was going through our mind is that we were thinking, how can we actually add value to them? How can we allow our investing company to re leverage on our resources, okay. our network, and then the experience that we have built along the years? Mm -hmm. So that's actually what we've been creating. I don't co found I don't found I don't co founder Crowd Plus. I was uh. actually engaged, engaged to okay. become the CEO of uh, uh, Crowd Plus, and then I'm part of the Crowd From Plus. From the pool of the partners. Yep, yep, okay. yep, yep. So each partner would have their own background, their own like investors that they bring in. Yep, yep. So how do you like? Uh, so you said you provide education for your investors, like smart. Uh, we we don't really say we okay we cannot uh, we we don't put it in the way that uh -huh. we are more superior than other people. What uh -huh. we want to do is uh -huh. that we have basically hit some rock bottom. We've okay. been through the valley of death. Uh -huh. Okay, in business world, we have lost enough of our own money mm -hmm. that we want we we hope that other people don't can learn that. a bit from us and uh -huh. share our experience with them. Okay. We we don't want to put it in a way that we are more superior and educate them we, we are looking about empowering and leveraging our resources okay. together actually people say you learn more from failures than you do from success uh, uh, agree agree uh, uh, part of it agree uh, however we also along uh, the way we also found some right formula that works okay. yeah yes. we, we managed to decipher the complicated business model into a very straightforward breaking way breaking da vinci code yeah we don't <laughs> break the da vinci code though. yeah basically it's just about the experience we uh, have yeah. but i have from experience you learn a lot of things and yeah. with your so many partners i think you're like better than one person's head in there yep uh we have we one one thing we created this think big network one mm -hmm. thing is very good is that we actually have a peer learning community uh -huh. where every month we gather around with our investee with our mentor with our partner in that meeting, basically, we discussed two things. 
What First thing it? is what problem are you facing? Uh -huh. How can I support you? Wow, it's like a peer learning network. So basically, it's, it's a non-agenda thing. It's really about uh, supporting, really about uh, working together, okay. brainstorming kind, uh -huh. of, kind of event. All right, all right. So I think you have like shared a bit. How would someone approach you or how do you look for someone to okay. help out? Okay, very good thing. Okay, for okay, let's talk about Kappa a bit. Kappa, uh -huh. I'm looking for. Uh, you must have revenue generating. Okay, okay, because you see, when you raise money from retail investors, uh -huh. retail investors are more keen into materializing their investment. Uh -huh. The money that I put into the bank uh -huh. and putting in Should your be more side. than what I put into the bank. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. So they are looking for opportunity for uh -huh. your future profit. Uh -huh. Okay. So that is for Cup Plus. Uh -huh. uh, Cloud Plus, we are looking for business that can relate to the retail investors. So we are actually focusing a lot on brick and mortar, All right. manufacturing, agriculture. Uh -huh. You know, we, we don't put it conventional business. We put it in a way where business that retail investor can actually relate themselves. They can. Yes. Let's say if you open a restaurant, mm -hmm. I think restaurant is the best. Uh, the, the best way for fundraising is equity crowdfunding. Uh -huh. Why? Be, before uh, out of all the eleven companies that will help. Mm -hmm. We realized that during the campaign of equity crowdfunding, their business basically grow by twenty to thirty percent during the campaign. Uh -huh. Why? Because retail investor, when they see your projects, okay, now like we are helping hometown to raise fund, we are helping Healthland to raise fund. Okay. Hometown is a hometown steamboat. All right. Yeah. So before the retail investor actually going through the investment detail, uh -huh. the first thing go through their minds. Okay, let's why not? Let, let's go and try it. Yes. Do I like the food? How's uh -huh. the service? How's the business? Uh huh. Is, is it really like what they have claimed? So when they try the food, so it's good. You got to know directly. Is it yes. really that or not? Yes. Then yeah. after that, the best part is that yeah. because they are maybe they are a bit cautious. Okay. Okay. So what they do after they try, they like the food, they like the services, mm -hmm. and then the next thing is that okay, I think I'm still not very convinced. I'm going to bring my friends and family again. Okay. So let them see the input from them. Yes. Yes. Oh, if everyone feels that they just want another valid validation okay. to yes, for yes. their decision making. It's, it's like an investment, right? Yeah. So I, you you support or not? Should I put my money in this? Yeah. 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 Okay. So so that is actually I think uh really brick and mortar really retailer is really ah. good for equity crowdfunding. So to approach Crowd Plus is very simple. Send send uh. Go to uh, www.crowdplus.asia, yeah. you know, send us your pitch deck. Okay. Uh, some of my team is going to contact you and then if we like your idea, we're going to send you a set of assessment form. Okay. So af after you fill out the assessment form, mm -hmm. we think that this is workable, uh -huh. we will invite you for interview and for uh, your presentation. Uh -huh. Okay. As for Think Big Venture, it's actually even very straightforward. I'm not looking for any disruption technology. Uh -huh. If your solution is going to change the world, it's going to disrupt the, the world. Don't please don't come him. to me. Don't I don't think him. I don't think Malaysia is the right place to create a disruption. Damn. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that is that is what we are. That, uh, uh, we are we are actually looking for sustainable business sustainable model. Business. They solve a real life like problem. Something if like my disruption is not really going to disrupt, but make your life better. Yes. So your focus your focus should be on. Conveniences, uh -huh. cost efficiency. Okay, yeah. that is save time, save money. Yes, that is the angle. Mm -hmm. How can you deliver your services or your product uh -huh. at the most co uh, cost, cost efficient price mm -hmm. and then more convenient for user? Actually, actually, I think it's very good that you know where you stand and what you don't want. Yeah. So, okay. uh, so this is the this is the uh -huh. angle that we are looking. Uh -huh. Uh, as for now, our first fund, we are focusing on O2, online to offline solution. Uh -huh. Okay. If you are in uh. How how can you actually bridge the online community and uh -huh. the offline community? Okay. Okay. So, so example, you said about the saloons and yep. whatever, all of them. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Now, like, we'll go into your discussion. Okay. The topic for today is like, your journey from bankruptcy to venture capitalist. My journey from bankruptcy. Yes, like wow. How long did it take? When? What? When did we start? What went wrong? What were you doing? I see. That? I see. Okay. Um. Just a quick sharing about my background. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, I did my studies in Inti College, nineteen ninety seven. Then after that, I uh -huh. went to UK. Uh -huh. I, uh, I finished my degree and then I did my masters. Uh -huh. And then what do I do is that after that, I created. Uh, I I've been working for Tesco. Tesco after, after Tesco okay. for a year. Then I move on to work for eBay for three hey, years. Back then, got Tesco already. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, Tesco is in UK. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Tesco is in UK, you, so you it's not in, so not I, in Malaysia. Not yet. in Malaysia yet. Okay. So after that, after that, I worked for eBay for three years. Then uh -huh. I came back to Malaysia because uh -huh. the main reason that I came back to Malaysia was that my parents are sick. Okay. So nothing more important than my family. Actually. After that, I came back to Malaysia. 
Uh, when I was in Malaysia, you know uh, that guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So when I came back to Malaysia, <laughs> I, I, I wasn't I wasn't know what I'm, am I going to do. So I start a uh, IT company. So okay. I started a tech company. But yeah. my tech company at first we were start, we were worked, we were talking about e-commerce. We were talking about okay. uh, web design. Because of your eBay background. Yeah. Right? But then we were running for about six to eight months. We realized it's not working very well. Okay. By then, e-commerce infrastructure was not ready. Yeah, Most people right. are still using a dial up for them, you know. Uh, uh, load, K, yeah, loading a website is very heavy. And but then that time, uh, uh -huh. we uh, I see an opportunity in this. Uh -huh. That time there wasn't any smartphone. Okay. Okay. Most people SMS are using uh, Nokia, right? And maybe Ericsson. Yeah. Okay. So during that time, we realized one thing: hey, the, everyone is using the same ringtone. Uh huh. Nothing fancy. Right, right. We right. see that a lot of people wanted to customize it. And that is the time when we start to launch our first product, which yeah. is selling ringtone. Uh, like so you sell the in the newspaper back page, got yes, the codes Yes, yes, so, so those are what, what we actually advertise. So uh -huh. we were selling ringtone. Then after selling ringtone, we see that hey, there's a good opportunity for us. Uh -huh. Then what we do is that we start to sell wallpapers. Wow. Okay. So wallpapers. Uh -huh. And then that was actually driving us quite a good revenue. Uh, right. Okay. What's next is that the best part is that after that we realized one thing. Hey, I think some uh, some some of our customers are quite boring. Mm -hmm. So we created a code start with six hundred. Okay. Okay. It's a mini of three ringgit. You send that uh, fax and all that, is it? You don't send fax. Basically, is that you call to the number to listen to joke, to oh. listen to zodiac, to listen to ghost story. Okay. Okay. We were we were actually making a lot of money by that. Okay, yeah. So, uh, a mini is like fifty cents. No, three dollar. Three dollar. Three, three ringgit. Yeah. Right. So that was actually what oh. we have created at that time. So we, we actually uh, run this company for about 26 months and uh, then we actually got IPO. 26 months? Yeah. So we got IPO. That was a time whereby Malaysia launched a new board called Mastec. Okay. Mastec and we were the one early like, one. You are the like earliest tech IPOs, yeah, right? Yes, yes. We, are, we, are, we were actually quite early at that stage. Did, did like sub, uh, like Cellcom or TM approach you for to buy you out? No, like actually they don't buy us out. Basically, <laughs> we are the official partner. We basically uh -huh. buy the short code from them. Okay. And then after that, we start to launch bar SMS, premium uh, SMS, on that. Yeah. So that was actually okay. what we were doing. So what was after IPO? What happened? After IPO, you know, when you start to when you are young, mm -hmm. when you start to make money, I think uh ego, ego uh, and the stubbornness uh, start to kill. We start to get into a stage whereby deficit spending because we feel that every market that we actually attend drive mm -hmm. a good revenue so we start to expand into Indonesia everything yeah. we start to expand into Thailand you know that time uh, I was I was actually raking in quite a good money so when we are raking good money we would tend to believe that whatever we do is going to be a huge hit so wow. we, we start to go over into overconfidence yeah about. overconfidence yeah. really ego stubborn we try to push in that yeah mm -hmm. but then actually I bankrupted the company I think eight months that that oh, wow yeah so, so after going in all to all these countries, you went bankrupt. What what's your partner say, man? My partners, my partners, basically, I think there is a lot of blaming game during uh -huh. that time, and then uh, I was basically very ignorance. Ignorance is that whatever they say, I feel that I have done nothing wrong. Okay. Yeah. So that was actually a, a huge. It was a it was a very good lesson for me. Right. To, to hit on the on the on the on the debt law on on this this big obstacle. So like. Yeah. So you lost everything, lost the company, lost... I basically, in terms of material-wise, uh -huh. in terms of money-wise, I basically lost everything. That is for sure. Uh -huh. I think the real challenge for me is that I even lost myself. I lost myself for a period of about six months. So like whereby basically, I just went back to my hometown. Mm -hmm. I basically sleeping on the couch on a daily basis. I was like doing nothing. Uh -huh. You know, that was the really the low time of my life. So like, I think many people are, when they get into that, depressive state it's hard for them to come out of it what made you come out or like parents pushed you or friends came and called you out you even don't want to leave step outside of the house what really makes me key i think okay that was a time where my my dad had a stroke okay. my dad had a stroke i think really by then yeah. you know as a son as a person when you cannot even take care of family, mm. I, I don't think that you are, you know, you are delivering any value. You know, that was a really a uh, low time for me where I see that I cannot even foot out the medical fees. You know, I was hitting a huge challenge in my life. Uh -huh. So that was a time where I decided I had to pick up myself and then uh -huh. I came back to care. I said, okay, even I come back to care, you know, all the sarcasm, people are looking, Andrew, you are so successful, you know. Yeah, I brought it upon myself. I have to agree that I brought it upon myself. But then by then, I was just begging people, can I just, can you just give me a job, you know? I need okay. a job to survive. Then okay. actually, I came back to 
uh, to uh, to work for a corporate. Uh -huh. So after that, for a while, I come through across uh, one of my boss from China actually approached me and said, Andrew, okay, we are actually looking for electronic waste in Malaysia. Okay. So how can it help? You know, uh -huh. uh, during my tenure working with a lot of telco, working with a lot of uh, IT, IT firm, mm -hmm. we basically have access to certain sea level of the corporate. Okay. So that time I start, uh -huh. I, I still remember my first client is Western Digital. That Western Digital okay. was producing a lot of hard disks and mm -hmm. then they, uh, they, have a main, they have a pain point on uh, managing their waste. There's a lot of spoiled hard disks. So, uh -huh. By then, I basically go and approach them and say, uh, how do you handle your waste? Uh -huh. So basically, they say, we pay someone else to throw it off. Okay. So what I offer them is that, can I actually come and pick up everything for you and I'll pay all the fees, uh -huh. all the transportation or okay. fee, and I will pay for all the labor fees and then I just move out the stock you for you. one point contact for all them waste management. Yeah, so basically, I just go and buy whatever their waste uh -huh. and waste. Then to my surprise that with this waste, I actually approached my boss. Uh -huh. Okay, so what can I do with this waste? Mm -hmm. So basically, okay, Andrew, this thing, uh -huh. because I still remember my cost is about less than two ringgit per kilo for, for the transportation okay. for the stuff. Mm -hmm. And then basically I sell for 60 ringgit per kilo. That waste was not segregated by like uh, metals, precious metals, semi-precious metals. Mm -hmm. Basically, during that time, we were doing a lot of refurbishment of hard disk. Refurbishment of hard disk. Yeah, okay. so basically, a kilo that we buy for two ringgit, uh -huh. that, that the cost of us, we actually sell it for six ringgit. ringgit. So basically, then I run the business for about six years and then we IPO in Hong Kong in 2004. Whoa! Yeah, so the second IPO. Yeah, so we basically work, 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 uh, work, out, with, uh, work out with other partners to IPO uh -huh. in Hong Kong. Uh -huh. And then after that, you see, after when you cash out everything, so now my life is good. I think I have financial freedom. Uh -huh. I, I have enough money for me to live a comfortable life. Okay. Then the real breakthrough is that on 2015 uh, Chinese New Year, I okay. went back to see my mentor. My mentor has been helping me along my way from my hometown. Uh -huh. So one day, uh, uh, during Chinese... Mentor is in your hometown? In my hometown. Okay. So basically, he he been nurturing me from very young. Okay. Mm. So what I do is that during that stage, mm -hmm. Chinese New Year, I, came back, I okay. went back to my hometown. Okay. I speak to him during Chinese New Year and then he asked me one question, Andrew, are you happy? I said, of course I'm happy. Wow, that's a big question. Yeah, man. of course I'm happy. Yeah. I, I've been traveling around, I've been diving for one whole year. Are I've you been really doing happy? Yeah, happy. <laughs> then, then he asked me a question, Andrew, do you still remember when I start to help you when you uh -huh. were young, you were asked for any return. So you, you asked for? The, I asked for any return. Okay. So my, uh, I replied to my mentor, no, you do not ask for any return. And my mentor replied to me, all I asked for is that uh -huh. I want you, to, I extend this opportunity to you. I hope that when you become successful, mm -hmm. I hope that you can help other people become successful. Okay. It's really about a pay it forward. I help you, I hope that you, when one day someone you else. you can help someone else, you just uh -huh. pay it forward and keep lighting the candles of other people's life. Wow. You know, that word really, really disturbed me for a few days. That is a time where I decided, okay, maybe it's time for me to start doing something. Okay. So after that, I come back, you know, we started this whole, whole, whole TBV. Uh, TBV. You see, in this venture game, uh, mm -hmm. we as a GP, as a general partner who okay. runs, who operates, who runs the business, uh -huh. Basically, put in two percent of the fund. Outside people. Yeah. Partners. Then the rest will raise it from the LPs, okay. which is a limited partner who put in the fund, but uh -huh. we run it. Uh -huh. But in in Team Big Venture, we I do it in a different way. Where but I put in sixty percent of my own money into the fund. Oh, you started from the. Okay. Yeah. So rather than just commit two percent, I put my all my skin into the game, making sure that I'm going to drive it through. Right. So I put in sixty percent of my fund. That is actually how I came into this <coughs> equity investing game. Oh. Yeah, but my equity investing game started actually quite early when 2004-2005 that uh -huh. era. Mm -hmm. Basically, I've been serving MathCap, I've been serving uh, CGC, okay. so along the way. That's credit Guarantee Corporation. Yeah, so I've been working a lot of way. Uh, along the past 50 years, I've been, I've been, have been very close contact, understanding the equity investing game for quite okay. some time. So yeah. you had a lot of background already. Knowledge, uh, in equity works. investing, yeah, equity, equity investing because uh, even before I become VC, I has been investing as an angel. I uh. run several a lot of business. I think I have actually failed more than fifty business. Even company like uh, I don't know whether you heard of Tower Record. Uh, Tower Record is sell, um, selling CDs, selling I DVDs. Know. 
I know there's one store in New York, la, Tower Records. Yes, same. okay, we, I basically own the franchise in Malaysia. I, I'm the person who run Tower Records Malaysia for over a period of uh, five years. Uh-huh. But then we screw it as well. Okay. I think our biggest competitor during this, people ask me, Andrew, why do you fail Tower Records? I said, uh-huh. is it because of piracy? I said, piracy have no concern with my business. It's iTunes. <laughs> iTunes, everyone went online. Yeah, because people actually, um, that was the time uh-huh. where technology start to disrupt how consumer behave. Uh-huh. Uh, technology has become so seamless in every people's life. Now, this, to be honest, no one watch, no one watch TV anymore. Everyone is on Netflix or Netflix, iFlix. Netflix. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and now you invested in Spotify as well, right? I don't okay. invest. I don't yeah. invest in Spotify. Yeah. Uh, Spotify is our official partner for Go Apps in Singapore. Oh, okay, Go yeah. Okay. Basically, uh, those database. Uh, Spotify user in Singapore basically co- collaborate with okay. our pa- uh, our investing company. Something in Singapore. interesting is yesterday I watched a video saying that people are streaming more than downloading per piece songs like uh, iTunes. It is, it is. So it is, you just pay a flat fee for streaming instead yep. of buying each. Yep, it is, it uh, is. Right. Yep. Okay, now uh, continuing back, like uh, after your second IPO, you like you sorry, um, you started TBV with a bunch of partners. Like, uh, what were the obstacles? Like you said, coming back from K- from your hometown to KL, right? It was hard to get a job until uh, someone called you. Like, how do you survive? Actually, it's not to say hard to get a job. Uh-huh. There are job opportunity everywhere. Okay. You see, but the real challenge during that struggle of uh-huh. the face of my life is uh-huh. ego. Ego problem. You see, a lot of guys uh, mm-hmm. cannot put down their ego. Sure. You see, okay, can nice. can you actually when you are a successful person to uh-huh. go back to a to a to a low tier of job, you know, to really begging someone giving you a job, that is the Hi, real uh, challenge in you. That yes. is the breakthrough in you. And mm. during that challenge, uh, it's really a lot of sarcasm, mm. a lot of you know, really uh, very desperate, desperate, desperate situation. Everyone talk, depressed. talk about you, a uh, successful yes. fellow coming to work. For yes, you yes, yes. So that was actually the real real challenge, uh. yeah. and then. It took me about a month mm. before finally really like saying that okay yes I've I don't care I just want to you know make it yes. I've know. messed up enough yeah yeah, yeah. Let's so, go to so the can next you step. just give me the chance yes. in, in that moment yeah. Oh, okay. yeah so now like you have helped a lot of people like uh, do you know like how many people you have helped grow and I don't measure by how many people I okay. help or how much I have I helped people. Uh-huh. I see that uh, people that has been constantly in touch with me, okay. uh, company that I've invested, uh-huh. I've seen them growing. Okay. I've seen them growing, and uh-huh. then uh, one thing is that I think I created some value into the ecosystem. Uh-huh. Uh, I would say that it is not very measurable because I don't have any major exit yet. Okay. But I've seen that uh, company that we have been investing has been uh, getting a lot of customers, okay. and then the feedback, the testimony from them, we see that the company that we help actually help more people to become successful. Then are you going to ask them the question? Have you have I asked you something in return, like how your mentor asked? Of course, I am. As a as a as a VC, yeah, uh. basically we have to ask a certain return from them <laughs> for sure. Now yeah. our job is hoping they will become successful. Uh-huh. We we'll, we we'll be working very hard to get them to hit a higher valuation uh-huh. because you see, as a general partner, uh, uh-huh. my responsibility is to my LBs. Right, right. The yeah. investors and all that. You see, as a VC, the real challenge about it is uh-huh. really about every time when we know that there is a uh, we can raise a new round or okay. maybe there is a possibility or exit, mm. we are so excited about it. Right. But most of the ninety five percent of our time, mm. we feel so deeply responsible. To make him grow. When, when the company is not doing well. Uh, you know, we, yeah. we've been going through the enormous stress during that moment. Like, wow, how can I face my investor? Every time we do a quarterly report, uh-huh. uh, monthly, uh, year, half yearly uh-huh. report, you know, we feel that, that they kind of deep responsibility in because us. the investor say, I invested because of you recommended. La. Yes, yes. <laughs> I would say it's not very... Okay, I believe my investors, my uh-huh. partners actually trust our professionalism. Uh-huh. However, uh, you see a lot of things are projection, a lot of things are hypothesis. Yes. But we will give our best to ensure that we hit the KPI, we uh-huh. hit the combined growth rate, we hit uh-huh. the IRR. Okay. So for me, it's like, to be honest, if you ask me, do I ask for return? Definitely, we need to ask for return. We hope that your company grow, mm-hmm. that one day we will get our exit so that we can plow back the money to help, help more people. Else. Yes. I think yes. that is, ma- that's why we, mm-hmm. our investment stage is between seed round to series A. So okay. anything after so you say you have raised a big round, I want my exit and then uh-huh. so that I can plow back the money to help right, the early stage right, again. Right, yeah. Right, right. So your concentration is like early stage commercial uh, sorry uh, I would say ideation ideation stage to expansion stage. Uh, ideation to expansion. Yep. Okay. 
expansion sales means that you have become a certain market leader in that country that we invested mm -hmm. you have achieved a very good traction yeah. that means now you are ready to scale to other cities you are ready yes. you have you have done your nation nationwide scaling okay. and then you are looking for overseas, overseas expansion. As well. so that is a stage where we think that we have done enough for you uh -huh. okay we are happy now now you are you have grown up you have become very successful mm -hmm. we want a exit so that we can pop back in the money to help the early okay. early stage in Malaysia I think like past few months right the topic of discussion in groups like startup mama and all that yep. is like depression among founders so this what can you tell them to to be honest uh, yeah. uh, I, I think entrepreneurship journey is very lonely lonely yeah that is the best way to lose all your friends <laughs> <laughs> okay so <laughs> you see entrepreneurship I thought join MLM uh, no join MLM no. <laughs> okay you see entrepreneurship uh, <laughs> is the way how I define uh. entrepreneurship is uh Okay, it's open up your life uh -huh. for unlimited possibility. Okay. Okay, and then you will realize the next thing. After you go into entrepreneurship, you will realize there are uh, more people who are more talented than you. Uh, right. Who are more wealthier than you? It's working triple harder than you. Working triple harder. Say like, she have to put that much work, uh. Yes, <laughs> you see, that is that is. I think that is the gauge of the expectation. Uh -huh. A lot of a lot of startup or mm -hmm. entrepreneur who when they went into entrepreneurship journey mm -hmm. they feel that this is a lifestyle i just want i'm going to look <coughs> cool you know mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a boss of company i get a, i get a c, c uh, i get a c, c level title a c level okay, okay c level title but then uh -huh. the real problem is that they don't know what to gauge of them uh -huh. entrepreneurship to me uh, another description is entrepreneurship is also like uh like egg egg uh. okay egg uh. so why is uh -huh. it egg, egg uh, when you break it from uh -huh. the outside it become a food yeah Okay, when the egg crack from, from inside, inside, it's alive. Ah, it's alive. Okay, you see, so a lot of entrepreneurship when they crack because from outside, it's because of pressure, pressure and pressure. then they break down. Uh -huh. But when they when they crack from inner self, because uh -huh. they get empowerment, they uh -huh. understand what they want to create. They they, ha they they can speak in conviction. They know what problem they are helping uh -huh. or value that they are creating. So they will they will they will have a breakthrough from inside. Uh -huh. So that is basically life. How you look at it, how you look at entrepreneurship. Someone told me like that. The most pressure from outside makes the best diamonds. That is a <laughs> cut. <laughs> that is a cut. <laughs> okay, a cut that, that, that is a type of polish and cut. Right, but right, right. I think the depression, uh, depression. I have no. To be honest, I I I would say that uh, those in, investing company actually work with me. Mm -hmm. Don't go through a good time as well. Uh -huh. We we have our roller coaster right, especially uh -huh. in on emotional. Okay. I think the main reason is that a lot of entrepreneurship fail along the way of uh -huh. getting into depression is that because they don't have a very clearly defined goals. What are they creating? Clearly defined goals. The okay. passion and the drive for them to create is because of pleasure. Pleasure. Okay. They, 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 no, no, not pressure. It's uh -huh. pleasure. Pe okay. Pleasure. So pleasure. they go into entrepreneurship because okay. they are anticipating a certain pleasure. They're going to make them looks good. But they, they don't really anticipate that there's a lot of hard work along the journey. And um, the drive and the passion will die out over time. Okay. Maybe one year, to maybe be honest, two If years. you ask me, yeah, uh -huh. I, was, I, always, I always tell my investing company, you don't stop when you're tired. Okay. You stop when you die. Stop when you die. It's, it's simple as that. Okay. The moment you embark in this journey of no return, uh -huh. you need to set your expectation high. Uh -huh. you, know? you need to understand what is in there. What what is the kind of shit that I'm going into? You know, before I actually go into entrepreneurship, okay. don't just go in because it's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Go in because you want to make a difference. You want you want to create a value where you think that you can hold on to your value. Your vision dictate your action, not mm -hmm. your emotion. Your vision dictate your action. Every startup, every company, every entrepreneurship mm -hmm. is bound to fail several times before right. you actually hit into the value uh -huh. of that. Then you will never, never, never rebound anymore. So that's like a threshold to pass. Yes. Yes. Okay. Like, um, what would let's say someone is in deep shit la. He's stuck. He don't know where to go. Like mm. people pushing him down. Uh. What should he do? Wait for some time. Let it cool down. Or fight then and there. <laughs> fight then and there. Okay. Then if that is the time, uh -huh. I would say, I have no advice for him, much advice for him. I say, then you look back into your business model, uh -huh. into why. At he got to that. Why the first place you want to get into this entrepreneurship? Uh -huh. Okay. Secondly, you know, what problem? What actually the pain that you actually wanted to solve for other people? Okay. What actually drive you during uh -huh. that moment? You know, look back into the first day why you started it. 
Alright. And then look back on your business, uh -huh. what actually attract my customer come to me at the first place? And then work with that why, space. Why customer come to you in the first place? Yes. And okay. then why you started it at the first place? What is the main drive or passion that actually drive you at the first place? Alright. So, but sometimes it's a personal goal, right? And once you've achieved that goal, then like this, what's next? Like I want a, I want a Lambo. Sometimes uh, some people go like that, right? Mm. After you get a Lambo, then what? Okay, you see, this is the, this is the, this is the best part in life. Uh. A lot of entrepreneurship, uh. a lot of startup. Uh. Every time in their life is I want, I hope, I try, I pray. Everything one one. Okay. You see, when you want something, when you try something, when you hope for something, mm. there is not emotionally attached to you. Not emotionally. Because okay. you only want, uh, how uh. desperate you want it. But today, if you declare to the market, I'm committed to uh. have a Ferrari. Uh. Believe me, in years you will get it. Because commitment, you see, the choice of word that you use in your life uh, uh -huh. come with a certain emotion. When you tell them, I'm committed, I will definitely do it. Mm -hmm. You see, the moment you dare to declare it, that kind of emotional going through your brain and, and, and heart uh, is uh, totally different. When you say, I want, I try, okay, I try. Only I try yeah. If I don't get it, it's okay. And then, a lot of entrepreneurship, the real reason is that it's not about setting a very high goal mm -hmm. and then you don't achieve it. Uh -huh. Most entrepreneurship set a goal where they are very comfortable. Okay, okay, so when they hit it, they become uh, complacent. Complacent. Yes. complacent. The rules of entrepreneurship is really about don't set a sky high limit because you cannot achieve. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to set a goal where you become stretchy. Stretchy, stretchy yeah. means that, okay, if I were to touch the ceiling, uh -huh. I have to stress myself and I really need to give a jump. Okay. Before I hit it, that uh, is a goal you want to set all the time. Can be touched, uh. Yes, uh, not to be said can be touched. It uh, takes a lot of effort. Right. You won't achieve it very easily. Mm -hmm. But that is a very stretchy goal for you. Okay. That means it will put you in the certain discomfort zone. It will put you in a certain stress whereby you will push yourself a bit. But if you set a sky, to be honest, no one okay. can hit the sky. No one can without a vehicle. Right, right. Yeah. So don't don't set too high, uh -huh. and don't set too low. Uh -huh. When you set too ho too low, you hit it, you become complacent, you become mediocrity. Okay. Mediocrity, you think that I'm comfortable. Actually, you have not solved whatever you intend to create no, at the first no, stage. No. Yeah. So like people say, if your dream is not big enough, does not affect people around you. It's not. That is maybe mm. that is changing belief. Changing that is changing belief. That's like the initial uh, stage, uh, like You want yeah. to get into business, then you think like that. Uh. To be honest, uh, mm. in business, it's very simple. It's mm. really the art of selling. Art of selling. Art of selling. I'm not talking about selling product. Uh -huh. I'm talking about selling yes, vision. Sir. Vision. Vision. Uh -huh. So what is the art of selling? The art of selling is the transfer of emotion of certainty. Emotion transfer of emotion of certainty. What's that? Okay. That's First time I if, that means if my vision to you, if I can speak with such a conviction, uh -huh. if I can speak with such a certainty uh -huh. that this is what we're going to create, uh -huh. we sell belief. The moment you change someone's belief, these people will follow you. Uh -huh. in, in, in business, the business is really about selling. You're selling your vision to your colleague, to your partner. Okay. You're selling your, your, your product, you're selling your, yourself <coughs> to, your, to your strategy partner, to even your landlord. Okay, this, I'm going to rent your place, I'm going to do it so nicely, I'm going to stay here for 10 uh, years. Sure, you, know, you, like want, one or? Uh, you want to speak with that conviction and confidence. Yeah, right, that, right. That I think the main art is entrepreneurship is about selling. And then lately, I come across a very interesting understanding. What's that? What's that? Entrepreneurship, uh, you see, uh, sometimes this is about selling. Uh -huh. uh, th there is a type of person uh -huh who always wanted to put ideas okay. into your mind. Uh, put my opinion into your mind. Got people like that a lot? Okay, so this group of people is what we call teacher. Okay. So the teacher always wanted to put their opinion into right, your mind right, to the right. students so hoping that you understand my opinion so okay. you run. Then there is another people whereby what they intend to do is that they want to they, they always think of a way how to put your money into my pocket. <laughs> okay, so okay. that is what we call entrepreneurship or business owner. Uh, now I realize there is one person who do it so well and excel in life in doing this, in doing two of these things. Both of that. Uh, right. is by putting their opinion into your mind and taking your money into her into the pocket. This person is called wife. <laughs> <laughs> this person is called wife. Uh, Honey, uh, I so think we need that. Person. We yeah. need the handbag. Uh. <laughs> so that is the person who did very well. Uh, so you see, if you want to learn about entrepreneurship, learn from a wife. From a wife. <laughs> Does that mean I have to get committed and get married to succeed? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> that was just a, just no a, la, la, uh, I, I, a sharing. I, it's an analogy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so like, uh, you know, like you see people on the street, they're working hard, struggling yeah. day in and day out. Like, um, example, uh, newspaper guy. Uh. Okay. Yes. I used to distribute newspaper when I was about 10 years old. 
said, ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, example. So you see, he is working hard. Yeah. How will he improve his business? Like example, uh. what does he need to do to like make it scalable? Like uh. take over the next taman, the next taman, like that. Okay. Oh, this I think this is ah. Uh, First thing I always say that uh, you need to meet the right person and uh-huh. meet at the right stage. Okay. Even you want to sell newspaper, uh-huh. sell at a more prominent place. You know, okay. you, it's it's your stage that actually determine where where will you be heading Maybe to. Maybe certain place they don't read newspaper. A certain place, there is a lot of place who don't read newspaper. Uh-huh. Okay, so find the newspaper or maybe certain papers or magazine that they will read. What you know, you, yes. you need to put yourself in the right position uh-huh. where you can attract your crowd. Okay. If you if you're a newspaper vendor, uh-huh. so you want to start to get into corporate. You know, you you might want to place your store in a place where where all the corporate people will be walking right, past. Right, 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 you right, never right. know one day who you're going to meet. Second thing, if you are a newspaper vendor, mm. I hope that you can learn by reading yourself. <laughs> you know, like, yes. you, so you, 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 you cannot help others mm. you know, until you help yourself. Okay. Right. So you need to prepare yourself, hoping that one day mm. when you meet someone who is uh. going to see that in you. Uh-huh. You see, always, uh, sometimes uh, in my life, uh, every uh-huh. time I invest in people, uh, uh-huh. I always uh, I see something in you. Okay. But I just don't know what is it. Ah, uh, it's like <laughs> intangible feeling. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. You need to create that that sense of you know, like oh, confidence. Ah, uh, right? confidence. Not confidence. To, to be confident, you need to equip yourself. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. need to know what you're talking yeah. about. Ignorance, uh, is not courage anymore. I don't know what it is. Uh, <laughs> you 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 cannot keep telling that I don't know what is it and then I don't care. No, you cannot ignore anymore. Uh huh. This world now is have become in. A world whereby mm. knowledge is very important. Uh huh. It's very important. You need to keep upgrading yourself. Yeah, they call it you know, keep 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 learning through. Right. So that newspaper vendor, I hope that if he really in that situation, uh-huh. ask himself, what what's next? What's uh-huh. what's next for him? Okay. There 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 are so much of resources where he's actually going through all the books every day, uh-huh. the magazine, the newspaper. You know, uh-huh. read more. Uh-huh. You will you will identify a trend. Identify a trend. Yeah. And grab the opportunity when it comes. You never know when you never know when the opportunity come. You never know. Yeah, you never know. But uh, most important is really get prepared, lah. I, I think luck is equal to preparation, lah. Uh, yeah. In in a mathematical term, luck means yes, in a more trials. Way, yeah, in a theory way, lah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I think we are running out of time for okay. today. Uh, is there some last words you want to put to our guests? Last word, lah. Not like last word, last word lah. Like uh, not last word. Uh, I, 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 do, I don't like to give advice. Uh-huh. To be honest, uh, I think uh, what I just want to share is that uh, entrepreneurship is really a lonely journey. Mm-hmm. Okay, before you actually get into entrepreneurship, don't look at the pleasure that you are looking at. Looking that what actually are you trying to solve? What is the pain point you're trying to solve? What is the the main reason for you to get into entrepreneurship? Mm-hmm. To be honest, I just want to share with you: money is not everything. But money is the next thing to oxygen. <laughs> After oxygen, you need money. You know. So before you go into entrepreneurship or any startup, I think the real challenge is the understanding what is the true value that you want to generate for your, for your customers. Secondly, I would say that you know build a sustainable business model that solve a real life problem. Don't create. You see, your uh, technology or business is like ice cream. Ice cream. You know, you take out from the fridge, take out from the freezer. After five seconds, it melts. It don't taste that good as well. You know, they, they, yes. I see that there's a lot of entrepreneurship, a lot of startup. You know, they create a business where we define it as it's good to have, but I can do without it because it don't serve a real pain. Understanding what is the real pain, have a very clearly defined goal before you take this step forward. Okay. I think they say the difference between a medicine and a vitamin. <laughs> yes. yes. No, vitamin is a supplement. Yeah, so I can yeah. live without it. Yeah, but yeah. medicine, you need it. No, you can't. Nowadays, you can't. You really need to have a good supplement a, to to drive all you around. Yeah. Okay, okay. I think that's all. Yep. Thanks Thank a lot, you. Andrew. He's been traveling all around the world yeah. and he spent his time with us for our viewers. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. See, See you. you next week. Yep. And no, no question, right? No question good. today. Awesome. I think you're clear enough. Okay, very good. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.